down here, Lord, I'm waiting on you. I'm down here, Lord, I'm waiting on you. I'm down here, Lord, I'm waiting on you. I can't do nothing till you come. sure you can hear my voices, but it is so good to see you this morning, to see each one of your faces. God is so good, and he has blessed us, able to be here once again in your presence, to lift up his name and just praise him. Oh, oh thank you, God, for allowing us to just see another day. See, we are down here, right? We are down here waiting, oh, Heavenly Father. We are just down here. We know that we can't do nothing until the Lord comes. So we thank him that he just allowed us to wake up this morning and to be in another worship service. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? In spite of what's going on in the world, we know that this battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. And if we just believe him and if we just trust him, won't he take care of everything? So let us lift up our hands and give the Lord some hand up of praise this morning because he is good, he is good. He is better to us than we are to ourselves because he knows exactly what he's, we stand in need of. He knows exactly when to provide it for us. All we have to do is just make sure that we are connected with him and allow, allow him to do what he does best. Amen? Amen. It's so good to see you this morning. It's so good to see all of you in your red. We know that this is the kickoff for uh, uh, Women's Heart Health uh, Month. So we just thank God for all of you who are still here yet alive to be able to celebrate. We know that there are many 
who didn't make it. We know that heart attacks are, are still going around in the world. We know that they are taking us out. Heart attacks, the number one killer in the United States of America. So let us give God praise that we are here this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We just bless your name, God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have come this morning just thanking you for your many, many blessings, for waking us up this morning, for letting us experience a brand new day, to be in our right mind and to know who we are and to know who you are. We come this morning just rejoicing and just thanking you for allowing us to enter your house of worship this one more time on this first Sunday in February, our communion Sunday. We thank you, God, for just loving us so much that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus of Christ, into a sin sick world to dry on Calvary, to die on the cross for our sin, so that we might have a chance for eternal life. We just thank you, God. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We come, Lord, just lifting up our voices in praise and adoration to you. We have come to worship you. In spite of all of last week's events, social decline, mortal decline, sickness, and even death, you are still God, and there is no greater. You are our creator. You are our redeemer. You are our deliverer, our healer, our comforter, our provider. You are everything that we need, and we thank you. So help us, dear God, to continue to seek you in your face, knowing that as long as we are seeking you, that you are going to meet all of our concerns. We thank you, dear God, for every person who has assembled here this morning, our pastor, our first lady. And we ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit fill this place right now in the name of Jesus. Lay hands, oh, Heavenly Father, on every component of this worship service, from the Zoom platform to the call-in lines and to any other media source and operation. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. We are here, dear God, to hear a word from you. We need a word, dear Lord. So get us ready for the preach word this morning. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Create new vision. Help us, God, to open up our hearts and our, get our minds right to hear and receive your word from your anointed vessels, none other than the Reverend Dr. Gerald T. Folson. We thank you for him, God. I pray that you will fill him, Lord. Fill him with your Holy Ghost preaching power and let him preach like he's never preached before. You know, Lord, what we all stand in need of. So we pray, oh, Heavenly Father, you've given the message to the pastor that every word that you give him will be preached so that every need this morning will be met. Break down barriers, interrupt strongholds, get rid of them all. Give us words of encouragement, words of hope, words of comfort, words of peace of mind, dear God. We need it, Lord. Let him speak life into dead spaces. We come, oh, Heavenly Father, expecting newness in our faith so that we may be able to better serve you, Lord. We come, Lord, expecting a revelation. So we offer it up all to you, Lord offer it all to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We invite you to worship with us in your giving. Hemingway is always ready to serve and meet the needs of the community. From our coat drives, backpack giveaways, food for our seniors, prayer and gift cards at the grocery store, our angel tree to support children who have incarcerated parents, and so much more. Visit us on our website at HemingwayMemorialAME.org forward slash give to see all the ways to give. This includes using the Givelify app, searching for Hemingway Memorial AME, or PayPal using the links provided. We also have Cash App, dollar sign Hemingway Memorial. You can send a check made payable to Hemingway Memorial, mailing it to 6330 Gateway Boulevard, District Heights, Maryland, 20747. If you are in the area, please feel free to bring your donation to our drop box on the Blazer Drive side of the church. We thank you for your giving. Continue to join us each week as we grow in our relationship with God. We have something for everyone from the Blueprint for Young Adults, Wednesday Prayer Call, Noonday and Pastor's Bible Study, ending with Men's Bible Study and Word on the Street for the Youth. Visit our website at HemingwayMemorialAME.org for details as we are still meeting virtually. Oh, come on, give God a hand clap of praise and give him glory and give him honor. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Give him praise and give him glory. If you're excited today, it's Communion Sunday. Come on and give him praise and give him glory and give him honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard you shouting a little bit in church school. So you don't have to stop shouting. Just carry that Holy Ghost power right on over into Communion Sunday. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Look, I just want to come to you uh, saying good morning, and I'm excited this morning. I'm excited this morning. A couple, I, this is not even on my agenda. Reverend Fowler, unmute. You can uh, let Reverend Fowler unmute if you would. Uh, uh, In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one, be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, we have a Savior. In times like these, we have an anchor. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Get your communion ready. Get your, come on, you can praise him while you get your communion cup ready. Or your, if you don't have a communion cup, you can have water or juice or bread or crackers, but whatever you need, just get your communion ready. It's communion Sunday. It's communion Sunday. Hallelujah. 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 As I prepare us, prepare your hearts uh, to be renewed. Prepare your hearts and minds to be renewed. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God by meekly kneeling or standing or sitting right where you are. I'm going to, if you will allow me, go over to the prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his death his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these creatures of bread and wine, according to your son, our savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. My friends, likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. If you can take the wafer, which represents his body. As we don't enter into this lightly, Lord, we know that the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life, take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. We take the wafer. Now take the cup. I know what the liturgy says, but the songwriter says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But what can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Drink for the remission of your sins. My friends, now that you've renewed your covenant with a holy God, let us rise in our hearts wherever we are. Go out, do the will of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's all you want. Uh, if he's all you need, give God a hand clap of praise and give him glory and give him honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Get your Bibles or your apps ready while you shouting. Don't stop shouting. Get them ready. Turn to Philippians, uh, the fourth chapter, uh, the sixth through the seventh verse. And then the 10th through the 13th. But if, if, you, if you get the Philippians 4, you got it. Come on, give God praise and give God glory. Get your Bible or your Bible app. Uh, and then Galatians 6 and 9, If you, that's a very familiar scripture. But uh, let me say those again. They're in the uh, chat. Thank you, Minister Kelly Waters. Uh, uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and 10 through 13. And then Galatians six through nine, six through nine, six to nine. Come on, give God praise and give God glory on this communion Sunday. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The, these are familiar scriptures. Of, I'll say them one more time. From Philippians, the fourth chapter, six through seven, uh, and then skip down to 10 through 13 in the fourth chapter. And then we will go to Galatians 6, 9. Come on and give God praise. Uh, the Bible says this as you're moving and turning your Bible. I know the Bible says it this way in the New King James Version. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And if you skip down to verse 10, Paul is saying this, Reverend Father, he's saying, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Come on, Paul. Though you surely did care, but you lack, but you lack opportunity. Here's what Paul said, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And Paul closes it out in verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And just a little, you don't have to go there, Galatians 6, 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If you just give me a few moments on the sermon series and this season of upgrade, the, under, uh, the series will continue to be understanding uh, the Holy Scriptures. The sermon title is Play the Entire Tape. Play the Entire Tape. Play the Entire Tape. The remix title is Relying on Holy Spirit. Series is Understanding the Holy Scriptures. Sermon title, Play the Entire Tape. The remix title is Relying on Holy Spirit. Pray with me as we get started. God, in the name of Jesus, move Gerald out of the way. Let the real teacher teach. Let the real preacher preach. Open hearts, open minds. Help us, God, in our, every way you can. If we need to unlearn some things and relearn them, if we need to look at them a different view, give us a chance to do that, God. But God, whatever you need to do, we believe folks are, are going to be saved and set free and delivered and healed. We believe people will grow and we believe people will join the local church. But God, we don't want to waste any of your time because you already know what's going to happen. So we turn it all over to you. And we just ask you, God, do what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Brother Woods, um, there was an author by the name of Johnny Enlow, and he wrote a book called The Seven Mountains of Prophecy. Some people have updated that book and added an eighth mountain of prophecy. These are mountains, but they are areas, really, uh, where Christians should have impact. Impact outside of the walls of the church. 
In other words, uh, they call them mountains. So they're, they're, they're the mountains, the eight mountains, when he wrote the book in the 60s, it was seven mountains, but that people have added an eighth one. Uh, the mountains are education, religion, family, business slash finance, government slash military, arts and entertainment, media, and they've added one just recently called technology. You got to understand why they added technology because technology, Reverend Martin, drives it all now. The bank can't do it without technology. Churches can't do it without technology. You can't even go to school without technology. Technology controls it all. When, when, when they had the a bomb scare at Bowie State. They didn't say classes were shut down. They said what? They were. You could do it online. Technology drives everything. That's a huge mountain or area. And these eight mountains in our society are not the only mountains. They're not the only one, but they are specific arenas God is giving us favor to retake. Come on, can you see Christians? That's why He gives us the gifts. That's why He gives us prayer. That's why it gives us all of these things outside of the wall. Can you see Christians writing the education curriculum? Can you see Christians are dominating? And when I say religion, I'm not talking about just in the walls of church. I'm talking about just dominating religion. Or can you see Christians dominating families and, 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 and writing uh, uh, different uh, programs for families and bringing families together, businesses and finance uh, institutions. I'm talking about full-fledged Christians leading them, government and military sister. I mean, Brother Brinson Evans, I'm talking about, uh, can you see the top generals uh, praying uh, in tongues and uh, uh, praying to a holy God and then giving the orders? I'm saying Christians, that's where God in, in, our, in me, our media, and arts and entertainment. God intended for Christians to not write the programming. God intended for Christians to lead NBC and CBS and ABC and all those other networks because God told us to go into all the world, huh? making disciples to all the world. And so Christians, we have to come up out of the closed mindset that we mean the church, and know God intended for us to dominate his world, his world. And so we, we are called, we, we have a calling, all of us have a calling to one or two of these mountains. We do. We have a calling to, the thing is, we have to make up in our mind as Christians which mountain we want to have the impact on. At the end of the day, this is what I want to say to you, uh, uh, Brother Woods. What I'm saying is, when they lay Gerald Folsom in the casket, and his days are old, which one of these mountains did I have an impact on? Which one of the mountains did I leave my legacy, did I leave a legacy for the next generation in? That's how God thinks. And, and so God uh, allows us to, he knows we can transform these areas through supernatural, Holy Spirit inspired strategy. But 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 Dr. Marco Clark, you're on here. You own a charter school. God intended for Christians to dominate education. We 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 have set our bar a little bit too low. We 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 have set our bar a little bit lower than God is expected to us. Uh, God didn't impart these gifts and God didn't impart all these talents, and God didn't give us certain resources, so we don't think we can lead in BC. That's where we, everybody's not going to make the impact inside the walls of the church. We have to dominate the culture. Why? It belongs to God. God's waiting on us. And, but there are obstacles, Reverend Fowler, that, are, uh, that, that bumps in our way of getting to these mountains. It, 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 uh, Satan does not want to see Christians take over these mountains. 
Satan does not want that. So what Satan likes to do if, with Christians is, is that he likes to get us bogged down into uh, little things, um, minor things. So we never see the bigger picture. And, and, and so he doesn't want Christians. Listen, why would Satan want Christians to build affordable house? Why would Satan want Christians to lead the music and arts industry? Why would the Prince of Darkness want Christians to write education curriculum? He wouldn't. He will not. So, but whatever the situation, however we need to get there, it all begins with prayer. Whatever the situation, we got to stay in prayer and believe God will give us the Holy Ghost power to impact those mountains. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm relying on Holy Spirit. If we're going to have impact on these mountains, if we're going to overcome distractions and conquer worry and defeat and setbacks, we got to understand no matter what, it's a fixed fight, we do win. So we must need God to help put some of these, us in line with some of these conditions through prayer. Here's how we have to do it. Point number one. First, we got to have a great understanding of prayer, Reverend Ramsey. We got to, that's why the intercessory prayer ministry is so vital. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, what? Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, Sister Geneva, by prayer and what? Supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be known to God and the peace of God, which passes, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. I like Paul. Paul, I really like Paul because Paul, oh, they asked me, uh, Sister Dixon in BOE, what biblical person do you identify with more? And I said, Paul. Now I identify with Jesus, but I said, Paul, I know what they were talking about. Paul, I'm talking about identify with Saul and then Paul. But I like Paul. He said, these are three different words to describe praying. They are prayer. Paul said, supplication and thanksgiving. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. The, the word prayer is the general word for making a request known to the Lord. It's a general thing, and it, it carries with it the idea of adoration and devotion and worship. Adoration and devotion and worship. And whenever we find ourselves worrying about the bills, whenever we find ourselves worrying about that doctor's report, whenever we find ourselves worrying about all hell breaking loose, our first action is what? To get to God in prayer. We must see the greatness. So the first step is that God will solve the problem is adoration. But the second step is supplication. Now, this is where Christians miss it. Supplication is an earnest sharing of our needs and problems. Specifics. God wants you to pray with specificity. God wants you to say, I will conquer that mountain of arts and entertainment. I will, God, conquer that my, I want to, he petitioned him, help me, God, to conquer that mountain of business and finance. Help me, God, not to just start one car wash, but start a nationwide move of car washes all over the, all over the world. Be specific. Hallelujah. And then, and then God, God, God says prayer, prayer is that broader one, but supplication directly to God. And, and, and then after supplication, God said, give thanks. Thanksgiving, give thanks. Well, he didn't say, wait till it manifests, Sister Ellen. He, he didn't say, wait till he, he brings it out. He said, anticipate it with thanksgiving already. Go on and give thanks now. Go on and give thanks because that doctor's report is going to turn around. Go on and give thanks because that cancer will dry up. Go on and give thanks. And I come by this morning to tell you it's time to just go on and give thanks. Uh, let your prayers be known to God. And God knows them already. He knows the request. But go ahead and make them known. And God will take care of everything. And what does the Bible tell us that? That God will what? He will do what for us? He, he, he will make us, uh, he will make us, 
come to the peace of God. And he says, and the peace of God. It's in our mind, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. The peace of God, he'll bring it to you. The peace of God through prayer, he will bring it. No need to worry. No need to uh, do anything. Move it to God and God will do it. But God doesn't just want you to pray. God wants you to have some experiences. That's why I say it's not a worship service. God wants you to have the encounter. God wants you to have the expectation that God will take care of it. So God wants you to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. What? He wants you to come up those steps once again to Hemingway, thinking when I get to the house of the Lord, something miraculous is going to happen. There will be some signs and some wonders and some miracles, and something may fall fresh on me. Do it, Holy Ghost. Do it. And he wants us to enter those gates. Hallelujah. Because God knows there's power in prayer. I turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I, I'm relying on Holy Spirit. Come on with me. Come on with me. Come on with me as we go right here. Point number two, prayer will allow contentment. Hallelujah. It'll allow you to be content. Look at uh, uh, Philippians 4, 10 through 13. Very, very, very familiar scripture. But I, Paul said, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. Come on. Reverend Fowler, this one's for you, uh, that now as your last, your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Now that I speak in regard to need, Paul said, for I have learned in whatever state I am. Come on, this one's for you, Reverend Fowler, to be content. Uh, I've learned how to be, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Here's what Paul says. I can what? Do all things. Not some, not most. All things through Christ who strengthens me. I, I, Paul reminded the Philippians that his thankfulness for the Philippians giving because uh, he was in need. Yes, he was in need, uh, but he wasn't needy. He was in need, but he wasn't needy. Uh, uh, and, and he was, but it was because they had been good givers to him. Paul, Paul was in need, but he wasn't needy. But the Philippian church had been the giving church that helped him do the gospel. And Paul said, look, I learned contentment. It ain't natural to mankind. Paul reminds us that contentment was more theoretical, but you can do this thing. I've actually lived this out, Paul said. You can do this thing. Paul, it doesn't come natural, Reverend Fowler. The contentment, you want to see your sister again on this earth. It don't come. Contentment don't come natural. We can, we can quote these scriptures all day long, but, but, it's, but it don't come natural, Paul said. But, 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 but here's where I like it. Here's what I like it. God, Paul said this, uh, that, that Paul's ability to be content didn't come off his education. It, it didn't really come off just read the scriptures over and over again. Paul understood one thing. He understood that he needed the strength of Jesus Christ to bring the contentment. That's the only thing. So I come by to ask you to make this personal today. I, I just believe that I say it to yourself, can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, if I have to grieve, God will get me through. If I have to, I can do all things uh, through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. I can graduate school through Christ Jesus. I can get over that abortion in Christ Jesus. I can start that business in Christ Jesus. I can have a healthy marriage in Christ Jesus. I can overcome mental distress in Christ Jesus. I can overcome any obstacles in Christ Jesus. I was born and shaped in God's image. Uh, the first man, Adam, looked just like me. And the last man, Adam, they called him Jesus, had hair like wool. They hid him in Africa as a child. And now I'm his child. So what I can say is I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That's strengthening me. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm relying on Holy Spirit. I've got to rely on Holy Spirit. I'll have to rely on Holy Spirit. I got the point number three, and I'm done, Reverend Martin. I'm done on this communion Sunday. Play the entire tape. Play the 
entire tape, church. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Spiritual warfare is long and drawn out. It's long and drawn out. But we have the promise. And we te test our faith over periods of time. This has been a long and drawn out pandemic, and it's still with us. But don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. We, we don't want you to get rare, weary. In transitions, the pandemic has shown the Christian church that it has to move into all kinds of arenas just because you don't see it right now, just because it don't feel right right now, just because you may be experiencing things that you never experienced before. I tell you, play the whole tape. Wait till the whole tape is played. Don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. God brings about the change. Humans adjust to God's change. Play the whole tape. Don't stop in Genesis. Wait till it gets to Revelation. Play the whole tape out. And then we can see the goodness of God. And that's what Paul did his admonishment to the Philippian church. He said, and let us not be weary, Brother Wood, in well-doing. Paul said, keep doing well. You may not understand it all. We may not see it all. The pastor don't even have it all. But God is in control. And Paul said, and let us not be weary in well-doing. In due season, Paul said, really what he said, Brother Mills, play the entire tape. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. This is the godly principle of sow and reap. This is the godly principle. And Paul really was saying, don't spiritually faint on me right now. Huh? Don't spiritually faint on me right now. Huh? And so I got to close with this. Uh, I want to tell this story. Uh, I got to tell this story. Y'all ain't going to believe this story. Uh, I was listening to a very familiar song to me. Y'all know the song. I was listening to the song that the men choir like to sing around Christmas, Brother Evans. Uh, you know the Temptation song. You know Silent Night. I was listening to it. Uh, but this time, I was listening to it with a much younger person. Much, much younger person. And I say, do you know this song? And they say, I don't know who this is. I, 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 I heard this. I don't know who it is. Uh, but, but guess what? Uh, the song kept playing, uh, and I saw the person uh, uh, start bobbing his head a little bit. I said, do you know who sang this song? He said, I have no idea who sang this song. But, 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 but I started to get to the second stanza, and he started, Sister Dixon, bopping his head just a little bit more. And I said, do you know who sings this song? He said, I don't know who sings this song. I don't even know who sings. I ain't like the song when it first started. I didn't like the way the music started. That ain't my type of music. But it kept playing the tape. And I kept playing the CD for him. And he kept playing it. And I bopped his head just a little bit more. I said, do you know? Who sings this song? He said, I don't know, Pastor, who sang this song at all. I, I have no idea. But tell you what, Sister Corley, at the end of the song, you had to play the tape to the end because they said, Merry Christmas from the Temptations. And when he heard that name, he played it to the end. He said, that's my grandmama's group. I wish it would rain. That's my grandmama's group. My girl. That's my grandmama's group. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. I came by to talk to somebody in this season of change. I asked you to wait on the whole tape to be played. I asked you to wait till the whole tape comes out. I asked you, we may not get it in the beginning. The light bulb might not come on midway. But if you hang in there in the end, God will do it all. Be not weary. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap 
if you faint not, I got to go him away. May the Lord God bless you real good. I tell you this, whatever God provides for me, I shall be grateful. Whatever God wants to do, I shall be grateful. Whatever God has for me, I shall be grateful because the songwriter said, I'm grateful for the things you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. And here's what I like. He said, I could go on and on about your works because I'm grateful and I'm grateful flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart. My gratefulness, put your hands together if you're grateful for the Lord keeping you, for the Lord watching over you, for the Lord being with you. Play the entire tape because at the end of the journey is when the Lord does his best work. You might not feel it in the beginning. You might not even feel it in the, end, in the middle, but one day you'll feel it in the end. How you know, preacher? The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm going to jump out this chair. How you know, preacher? The songwriter put it this way. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How you know, preacher? My mama... He cured of cancer. My daddy, he, he cured him of cancer. One day, I didn't think I needed him, but I tried him for myself. But he told me, you might not get it, young man, right now. You may not get it midpoint. Wait till the whole tape has come, and God will do the rest. Hemingway, I'm asking you, let us play the whole tape out, and everybody will be blessed. Say yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. If we can just play the whole tape. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. On here that wants to give their life to Christ. Play the whole tape now. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Give your life to him today. If that's you, why don't you give your life to him? Why don't you make this your church home? Why don't you come and let us know if you need prayer? Here are the ways. We have people right now in the chat assigned to help you. If you would like to give your life to Christ, that's the first thing. I want you saved so we'll know where you're, where you're going. Their ministers here, prayer warriors ready. You may just need prayer. Something's going on in your life. You may not, you might not need, you might just need it for understanding. See the ways on the screen to contact us. We will pray with you and pray for you. We have an awesome intercessory prayer team. We'll get it to the prayer team. But guess what? We'll pray with you right now. Hallelujah. 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 And if you need a church home, come and join us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 That's all I got today. Hallelujah. Look, do me a favor. Play the whole tape out. God will do something awesome if we allow the whole tape to be played out. But if we decide to make judgment, Along the journey, we'll miss it. Don't miss the move of God. It might not be what you think, but it's what we need, all of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful word. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We should all applaud, uh, give God some praise because of the word that he gave Pastor Folsom and being obedient to the Lord our God to bring us to a different place to keep us moving towards upgrade and to occupy these mountains of culture in the name of Jesus. Let us look to the Lord mm, in gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done for us this morning, for your very presence. Thank you, dear Lord God, for uh, the word that came through Pastor Folsom. Thank you, dear Lord God, even 
for the church school lesson by uh, Reverend Fowler in the name of Jesus. We ask dear Lord God that you touch each person on this uh, platform this morning that they may come to a place in you hallelujah where they know what where they're supposed to occupy keep us dear lord god hungry for your word and keep us coming back to this place that we may have contact that we may make a connection that we may endure to the end and play the whole tape that we may endure to the end and not faint not give up but learn Learn to be content, but learn, dear Lord God, where we fit in, in these cultural mountains. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all that you're doing. And now unto you who is able to keep us from falling. Now unto you, dear Lord God, who who keeps us in you, before you in your exceeding glory with great joy. To you, Lord God, our Savior, who alone is wise, to you, Lord, be glory. To you, Lord, be majesty. To you, Lord, be dominion and power now and forevermore. It is in Jesus' name. It is in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen.